Hi, good afternoon. I'm Travis Lanier, I'm the Chief Product Officer at Ventana. Uh, I've been doing CPUs almost 30 years, and uh, I've been involved, say, I was at ARM for about a dozen of those, and I was at Qualcomm for about another 10. So if anyone wanted to talk about why RISC-V uh, is inevitable, I've got probably a few stories I could tell you over a few beers. But anyway, there's a tremendous amount of traction, and uh, I'm going to talk to you about what Ventana is doing in the AI space, if I can get this to advance. So we've traveled around the world the past year, and we've talked to OEMs, hyperscalers, and various end customers. And what's clear is there's tremendous momentum and traction for RISC-V, with real design wins in the data center space and HPC. So you'll see things start to happen over the next year or two. But the other thing that's become abundantly clear is that there's a massive change towards AI. So everyone's excited about RISC-V, but when you go talk to them, they say, what's your AI story? So let's talk about that. RISC-V is going to be a big component of AI. We've talked about that today. And uh, it's going to be a balance of what you see with traditional scalar compute. I think there was a great discussion on that earlier, where obviously the traditional compute is not going to go away. But you are going to see... AI show up as a component of almost everything going forward. So let me tell you a little bit of history about Ventana. Most of the people at Ventana were involved with companies that did the first ARM servers. So the question may be, well, why did you pivot from ARM to doing RISC-V? And one of the key things or motivations for moving to RISC-V is this concept of domain-specific acceleration. And we've heard people talk about that throughout today. And when you look at AI, it is, in effect, a form of domain-specific acceleration. So that's why we think that RISC-V is the future. And this is true across a variety of applications. You can look across the breadth here. Um, there's just general AI computation in general, but data center, automotive, the intelligent edge, all of them are going to have some component of AI in it. But the key thing is it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to need a little bit different scale of AI components. It's going to have different models. And each one of these things are going to need to be customized. And that's where RISC-V strength is. So you can optimize it for the particular application or performance level that you need. Now, this is a big number. Uh, we got this from one of the, the analysts. $22.5 trillion economic impact over the next several years from AI. Now, obviously, it's a big gold rush. Everyone's going, hey, I have to go and do that. There's a whole bunch of startups saying, hey, we're going to have an AI solution. We're doing an AI accelerator. But it turns out, you know, why aren't all these guys printing money right now? There seems to only be not that many companies, at least on the hardware side, getting a lot of traction. And uh, we feel that comes down to a lot of it is software. Um, and some of it is just over-optimizing or focusing on specific things. So you can look at a whole bunch of accelerators from a few years ago, and I think people touched on this earlier. There's a bunch of companies that went out and did these excellent accelerators for ResNet. Right? Hey, this is the greatest thing ever. They had these fantastic benchmarks. And then, oops, a few years later, um, yeah, ResNet's not exciting. I want to run transformers or LLMs. So, okay. So you over-optimize and you add too many specific things in there. The other thing is, is people create a chip or they create a, uh, a platform and it's for one end of the spectrum. Hey, I have a, a data center accelerator or I've got this really tiny thing that I go put in and that's going to go accelerate uh, you know, a, a chip that goes into your eyeglasses. So you need to be able to adjust to your market. So you want something common, um, but you have a lot of these companies in different places all designing something unique, and so you can't scale to the workload with these solutions. These companies are just focused in the one particular area. And then lastly, you have the inability to keep up with AI innovation. And this kind of ties into the first point. Um, you can optimize for what's hot today, but you need to be able to keep up. And if you have a locked-in ISA or you're using someone else's solution, you can't easily modify that to keep up. 
So in the end, what you need is open hardware and software stacks. So you can have a common base to build off of and not reinvent the wheel every time you try to do an AI solution. We feel that risk five is the key towards doing, solving a lot of these problems. Now, there was a panel up here earlier. I, I would like to have been on it because I had a little bit of a different opinion. Uh, I don't think we're as far as part, but I think a lot of things probably do need to be standard in AI. Now, it doesn't mean it necessarily has to be in a profile and included in every risk five processor, but if you can standardize on basic operations that show up over and over again, there's a huge benefit. Um, I saw Lou Dai actually talked about uh, floating point. I've actually used that in some of my discussions whenever I talk about AI. Is that it used to be optional in, uh, in x86. If you go back to the 286 and 386 days, you could actually get different uh, floating point solutions from different vendors and then attach it on. Anyway, my main point here is, um, let's go through these points and I'll talk a little bit more about that one. But if you standardize on the software instruction set, right, we've standardized on vector, we have a pretty good vector extension. Uh, you should be able to standardize on some of these other things. Now, will matrix be important going forward or not? I don't know. But matrix math can be used for multiple things. And there's a lot of pretty standard operations in matrix math that you could probably all agree on and then leverage that into standard software support, which turns out to be one of the top problems that people encounter when they're trying to do their AI solutions. So you have all these companies trying to do an AI accelerator and then they have to go and rebuild a complete software stack to go try to compete with CUDA. So if you have these things standardized, you can then just focus on what you actually need to differentiate rather than trying to rebuild the whole stack. Then of course you can scale your solution once you have the right uh, solution. So I talked a little bit about this before in some other places, but we call this RUCA. Uh, and this just means RISC-V uh, Unified Compute Architecture. And the idea here is that you try to put as many of these operations as you can into RISC-V. Now, you're going to want to invade on top of that and have some customizations, but there's a lot of standard things you can do with vector. There's a lot of standard things you can do with matrix math. And if you can build these, your software on top of these standard extensions, then you've gone a long way towards standardizing your software stack and having to completely rebuild your AI software solution. RISC-V gives you that ability to also do what you want to do on top of that. Then you also get into some other architecture advantages when you have a unified RISC-V architecture, such as you not necessarily have to use software to push things back and forth between the accelerator and the uh, control CPU. Chipless is another dimension on top of this. So RISC-V and DSA lend themselves well to this chiplet idea, where rather than having to do this monolithic approach that you see here on the left, these chips are huge. They take years to come to market and take hundreds of millions to go develop. And the idea here is if you have this concept of RUCA chiplets, this is smaller RISC-V cores, not necessarily these large ones, but then you compare this up with, this right here would be the idea, it would be uh, high performance RISC-V cores, and then you have in the middle here, or at the bottom actually, this concept of an I.O. chip. And you attach these all together and you start to have a, an, uh, an AI solution. And the idea here is that you can scale these up in the different ways to create the solution that you need at a much lower cost point. So rather than trying to develop the whole thing on the left, you just take the components you need or redesign the particular component you need and then scale it up or down. So just as a reminder, Ventana's focus on high-performance CPUs. On the previous slide, we showed the RUCA cores and we showed the scalar cores. We're focused on the CPU server portion of that. So we're aiming to have the highest performance RISC-V cores that can compete with the latest from x86 and ARM when that comes out. We'll be shipping these platforms to customers next year. Uh, and we'll probably be shipping in volume and data centers the year after that. So we'll be sampling next year is when the first one of these uh, x86 or Xeon class servers will be coming to market. And what we have here is a visualization of how you can put together these components to create an AI system. So what Ventana has here is our Veyron RISC-V server. This is the thing that Ventana is focused on 
along with the I.O. die. We have partners working for the I.O. hub. And what this allows our customers to do is focus on creating these RUCA cores, or RISC-V type solutions, and that ties into the platform. And that allows you to create a system that can scale up in performance. And the idea here is we want to try to leverage as much software as possible. So work has already begun in the RISC-V system. We've already had people talk about this today. And what you see are plenty of projects already being ported over to RISC-V. Uh, many of these are the key ones that you need to be doing AI. And at Ventana, we've taken this a bit further. I typically usually show just our data center software stacks. But what we've also already begun to, to do is actually take these individual components and run complete AI software stacks on RISC-V to prove out this concept of RUCA and running um, various things such as like TensorFlow or PyTorch on top of that, top to bottom on a RISC-V platform. And so just to drive home this platform concept a little bit further, uh, we're not just focused on the CPU. We want to have a complete system that's put together. So I mentioned earlier that we did the first, or that this team actually did the first ARM server. So we had a lot of experience with what it takes to bring these things to market. It's just not enough to say, hey, I've got a CPU, and say you're done. Uh, so there's been a lot of talk earlier today about profiles and how do you get um, things standardized, not just from the CPU perspective, what goes on outside of that, and how does your system boot up, for example. So we have a high-performance CPU. I showed you the software stack. So we have a lot of these things available today. You can go download our SDK, and it's not just a piece of the software. We have many of these complete software stacks ready to go for the data center. We also have uh, enterprise-grade system IP. So it's not enough just to have the CPU, but we have the IOMMU, which allows you to virtualize your devices out there. Then you have various types of DSA. We have uh, AI type of acceleration. So I showed you some of the software that we're working on there. And then domain-specific acceleration for various types of other things, such as encryption or database acceleration. We've also focused on chiplet technology. We're also pioneering how do you stitch these things together to create these systems in a low-cost manner. We've also made sure that our IP and our chiplets will be automotive-grade certified, so it allows us to go into these other markets. We've taken a fresh approach to, uh, to security. So not only um, have, do we have the standard things you'd expect to see, like, OK, how do you, uh, how do you deal with trust zone, or how do you have a secure computing environment, we've made sure that we're resistant to side channel attacks from the ground up. We have extensive RAS features, such as data poisoning and uh, error protection on our IOMMU. And we have a low latency knock, which allows the CPUs to communicate with each other in a high bandwidth, low latency fashion. We also have a high performance cache architecture. So again, it's one thing to say you have a high performance system, but when you have these large data sets that you see in AI or in the data center, need to have a high-performance cache to go along with that. And lastly, we're at feature parity with the other architectures now. So that's a big thank you to the rest of the RISC-V ecosystem. The things have moved very quickly to bring RISC-V up to parity with what you see in the x86 in the ARM space for getting into the data center. So with that, uh, I think it's pretty clear from today that AI will be pervasive across all tiers of computing. But my main point is that I think that there's a common architecture and software base that is required to get it across all these different uh, applications. We feel that RUCA is one way to do that. So you can add these extensions to RISC-V, and you have a base that you can build off of. But achieving this requires a platform. And so that's what we feel that Ventana brings to the, uh, to the ecosystem. So we can pair up our server base with various RISC-V RUCA chips. So Ventana will be partnering with people to deliver these types of platforms over the next couple of years. Thank you.